Hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. good. Yeah. Honey. honey is honey. Why yeah, honey? honey. Oh, I just wondered, I just wondered what that was. Was that a Pomeranian not on your knee? Um, <laughs> or you're just pleased to see me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. She's lovely, isn't she? You know, we've had her for th uh, three years now. I've had her since wow. we drove into the wilds of the Isle of Sheppey, Debbie. Do you remember? Yeah, to pick her up, yeah. Do, does yeah, she well, love her new home? What, darling? Does she love her new home? She loves it. She really does. She's very calm here. I think it's a very good kind of energy here, actually. So, yeah, she's loving it. She's um, enjoying the sort of the ambience, you know. And there are some nice walks around here as well. Well, there? she did tell Beanie, actually, that uh, she thinks it's more up her street, a bit more, it, you know, Cobham is just a bit sort of grander than <laughs> Gerald's yes. Cross. Yes, it is. Well, there's more going on. Yeah. And, oh, um, you do your Cobham as muck. Oh, absolutely. Very good, Natalie. I, I like that. Cobham as Mark. I love it. Yes, <laughs> well, she likes going into the um, cafes, you see. She, they're sort of <laughs> cafe people, aren't they? Yes, exactly. Her Bean as well. Yes. So, so yesterday, I know that uh, Natalie and I have both been through it this weekend. So your son has come back from New York and you're not feeling brilliant. He wasn't feeling well. That's right. Yes. That's right. <laughs> flu. Flu. Yes, yes. Um, and, and, man, and man flu. Yeah. No, um, not man flu. I literally have never ever seen him ill, but uh, today that sounds really bad. Yeah, no, he's not a he's not a man flu, but he's a person who gets up and just gets on with it. Who has had flu with you? No, Kira has had food poisoning. Oh, uh, oh my gosh! And it really was. Bad. I was on the way down to to work with Jim. To do, to do Jim's Sunday sandwich with Jim Davidson and I had to turn back and I had to go back and look after her and three boys uh, one sick daughter and three boys one being only uh, 14 months old <clears throat> oh, um, I am completely oh. and utterly knack knackered I mean you know it's just exhausting Does she know what it? Do, do you know well, see, it was either a bug or she had food poisoning I think it's probably yeah. food poisoning yeah, but she actually couldn't get up. She couldn't. She could not stand. No, that oh. is really bad. Well, guys, I have to tell you, my daughter gave birth a few days oh. ago, oh. Oh. and to a very, very big boy of ten pounds <laughs> one ounce. Oh my goodness! I know. Oh. And <laughs> she is like she. They're all absolutely ecstatic. My granddaughter Summer adores him and holds him. Just wants to hold him all the time. The other boys look at him oh. rather sceptically and thinking, oh, OK, another boy, <laughs> all right. Anyway, but it's all fabulous. But, like, I know exactly what you went through. I mean, you know, she, in the end, had to have a caesarean, of course, but do you know what? Oh. It was a big thing. And um, I had about two hours sleep because, of course, I was called in the middle of the night, drove over to be with the grandkids, and they all we all slept together, and then Mum and Dad went off to the hospital. So... He was born the next day, but we're all knackered, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, oh. I mean, you, how big was your Lovely. biggest baby? Oh, about uh, seven pound twelve. That's it. Ah. That biggest, yes. Can you imagine yeah. a ten pounder? No, it'd <laughs> be bigger than me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Apparently, um, when the doctor pulled it out him out, he said, "Here we are. Hold your toddler." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, wow. Imagine, so is she going to breastfeed? Because I wouldn't want to breastfeed a 10 pound. She's not, she she started to, but she said he's just too hungry. Yeah. She's like a three month old baby, <laughs> so she's not in the end. <laughs> Was he oh, left? My eyes are watering just thinking about ten. <laughs> oh my goodness. But he is beautiful. Oh. But then I, I suppose I'm biased, really. <laughs> no, he's gorgeous. He's very squishy, isn't he? He's very squishy, yes. Called Casey. Casey, that's Casey. nice. Casey, that's really nice. That's yeah, nice. Casey and the Sunshine Band. Oh, yeah. Na, 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 na. Baby, give it up, give it up. Baby, give it up. I think we're all delirious, aren't we? <laughs> Casey. 
not Casey. Yes, yes, K C. That's correct, Natalie. Thank you. Oh, who is our guest today? Oh, it is the wonderful Stephen Smith. Oh, oh I see. Hi. Hello. Hi, hi, hi Dean, Debbie. Hi, darling. What is that on your face? What's that? What's that on your face? Where? Oh, <laughs> I've got a beard. Have you not seen it? No. What do you mean, what's that on my face? How rude. <laughs> How rude. I've gone butch. You you have. Very <laughs> handsome. It's rather nice, actually. Yeah. You know, I, I grew... What happened was, during lockdown, I grew a, a sort of beard. And I have to say, I've never been able to do it before. I did November twice, and it looked tragic. <laughs> I mean, really tragic. Uh, uh, I went. I went to have uh, something waxed, and the, the, I had my nose hairs waxed. And the girl went like this. I went, "You've taken my moustache off." <laughs> and she went, "Was that what that was?" <laughs> but during lockdown, it grew. And I was chatting to people because, oh, we really like your beard. And I thought, oh, I might. As well. And I, I just kept it. I occasionally shave it off. I'll, I'll do it before New Year. Um, but and I've kept it for us. We all, we all did strange things during lockdown, didn't we? <laughs> but why we did, did your beard indeed. manage to grow then in lockdown? How odd. Yeah, I know. It just seemed to come on all of a sudden. And now, <laughs> funny enough, when I shave it all off, it comes back quite quickly. Well, well yeah, they, yeah, they are. I mean, the thing is, I'm not a mad lover of bald heads, I must admit. I like, I like a bit of hair, darling, for men. I think it's sexier. Having said that, you know, it's it's the person, isn't it? I'm just trying to be kind here. I know, but what you, 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 yes, but see, the problem in this day and age, we're also frightened of offending people. If you don't fancy someone bald, you don't fancy somebody bald. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. Hey, we, we all know what we like and what we're attracted to, so yeah. let's, let's not be silly, <laughs> I always say. Do you know, yes. Stephen, I, I've been reading all about you, and well, I haven't met you before, but it's, it's absolutely fascinating. Um, what you've achieved in your life, but I didn't actually think we'd be talking about nose hairs immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it'd be far more glamorous, but you know what? I want to ask you about your latest book, It Shouldn't Happen to a Hairdresser. I just, I'm fascinated about well, all of the well, um, amazing experiences that you've had and are still indeed, having. That, that, that book came out a few years ago, a new book come here called The Hacking, but let's, let's talk about it. Oh. You know, the hairdresser. I wanted to write a book about hairdressing, but not, but also make it interesting and a story because there was a story to be told. Because back in the day, uh, Denise Welsh, Lester Middlehurst, who was the very famous male journalist, and myself were all great friends in Brighton. And of course, we were like, I was 18, I think. Uh, Denise was 22, uh, and uh, and we created this bond friendship, and then our lives sort of blossomed. I was still, uh, Denise and I are still great friends now. So I wanted to write about our story, as well as bringing in uh, about hairdressing and giving tips on things, and, and some of the celebrities I did. I was very careful. People say, oh, have you done a, a kiss and tell book? No, I haven't. I've written a mm -hmm. book about hairdressing, and you may guess who some of the people I'm talking about are, and one or two I've talked about, because you know they, they are, People that uh, agree to be in the book. Lovely. I know. I know that I've seen you um, transform people into movie stars. And I was going to ask you who you think we are. Who 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 oh, you transform? But you know, it's really you? weird. There's there's something channeling about you about Marlene Dietrich. Uh, <laughs> I don't I don't know what it is. It's just something I could see me. I, I think I was right and turn you into. Uh, to Marlene Dietrich. Now, now I have to say, uh, um, of course, Marilyn, which you, who you've played, yes, uh, cool. uh, um, uh, comes straight out, 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 out from there. Uh, I mean, it's just you, you sometimes you just feel something about people. Hairdressing is an odd thing. Uh, you look at someone, and you can see how they, they should look. Uh, which, which is why I enjoy, I enjoy hairdressing. Now, Stephen, Natalie, it. who you haven't met before, and Caddy, but I'm just going to talk to you about Natalie. Natalie sometimes describes her hair as what? Oh, How do you hair? my daughter said that the last haircut I had, she said, you look like a Playmobil lady. You look like the Lego Land lady. So <gasps> I look oh! like the... ah! Yes, yeah, see if you put your hair up there, I, I guarantee you have a, a, a classic muzzle face. Uh, and uh, it's the wrong length for you because it's just not, it's just sitting there. Either you need to grow it longer or take it okay. shorter. I'm definitely not going to have any nose waxing though because it bloody hurts. Um, no, okay. Hair up with a beautiful on you. Uh, you're just someone that's got a very classic face and it's, you're so lucky. Uh, and as I say, 
you know, if, this is great, but your daughter's right. Uh, you know, and <laughs> you do look like a Playmobil. Listen to your daughter. I mean, your kids <laughs> tell you that kids are really <laughs> honest. <laughs> Horrifically yeah. honest. Yes, I'm, I'm staying out of this one. You can go. Back. No, Caddy, you can't get out of this. <laughs> no, uh -uh. Do, you ever, do you ever do black hair? Oh, do you know what? This is the thing that really annoys me in this country. I trained in the US because I worked in Beverly Hills. Now, to do, you have to pass. You have to pass an exam in the US to be a hairdresser. You just, even if you're fabulous, fat, best hairdresser in the UK, you still have to do the exam. Now, part of it is to do what they call Afro Caribbean hair. Uh, and you have to train in it. And it's a specific skill. Now, in this country, if you're a Caucasian man, that you do Caucasian hair yes. and you don't do it. So I trained in the, I had a great time actually. I learned so much about black hair. So, you know, I could do a jerry curl. Uh, and But the funny thing was, people talk about people being prejudiced or, or racist. When I used to turn up on the shoot and it was a black model, they used to go, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> oh, a white boy. <laughs> because but I knew how to do it. They were like, oh, okay. So I ended up doing uh, Naomi Campbell's mum's hair for her. Uh, but I think in this country, we should insist that we're trained in absolutely uh, every type of hair. Uh, and because uh, you should be able to do it. Uh, yeah, because and... my daughter, Konya, does quite quite a bit of modelling and she panics <laughs> because they're all white hairdressers and all the black models just go, no! Well, it's not just like, if people think, it's a common mistake, there's this fantastic thick looking hair it is more fragile than you can ever yeah. believe. If you, if I mean, uh, some, of the, some of the hairdressers in the beauty school used to laugh as bits dropped out because uh, you know, because uh, it does. You know, you, you highlight it and it can go very easy. Some of you overprocess it, uh, and again, you, you know, you, you use different techniques on it. Uh, but it's something that's well worth learning because then you're an all rounder and you should be able to do it. And I think it's ridiculous. Uh, that a lot of hairdressers can't do in this country because, as I say, in the US, you can't get away with that. But your hair is very long, isn't it, Caddy? It is. Oh, it is long, but it's yeah, um, it's long. But I've also added bits as well, so yeah. it's a mixture of the two. But my hair comes down quite long. But it's difficult because it's kind of it's not as tight as my daughter's hair. So it is it is Afro hair, but it, yeah. it you know it's mixed racy Afro Afro hair, which is the hardest. Yeah, but it looks so spectacular when you when you actually do the hair. Uh, as I say, uh, I, I, again, uh, we can understand why people get excited because sometimes with the weaves, they can, you know, I know one one woman that flies to America to get her weave done uh, yeah. and comes back. Uh, she pays two and a half thousand pounds to have it done. So when she arrives, she doesn't want someone that's going to wreck her her, her, her yeah. very valuable <laughs> extensions. <laughs> as I say, yeah, but you know, it, it, once you know how to do it, and it doesn't take much longer, uh, it's, a, it's a skill for life. Uh, and I think, you know, it's something we really need to uh, fight for in this country to be able to be all rounders. So, yeah. yeah. And I think, yeah. Yeah, I think it's knowing that it's completely different and you can't yeah. approach it the same way. Well, it's, 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 it's even just doing blonde hair that, you know, you, you have to really, I mean, first of all, you have to have a passion for hair. Uh, and you have to really want to do it uh, and uh, and also be able to listen to people. But be able to be an all-rounder is so important. So when you you, you go into a salon, it's terrible to say, oh, sorry, I really don't do this type of hair. I mean, what kind of <laughs> things do I have to say to people? You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what, Steve? I want, to, I want you to tell us, you don't have to name the person, but who had the most horrible scalp and hair? Who was, who was hair didn't you want to touch? You know, there's lots of people in this world that perhaps don't look after themselves as well as they should do. Uh, and uh, as long as a person's nice and polite, uh, you just go on with it. You know, I, 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 the only people I don't like doing are, are rude people. I mean, people say to me, well, what do you like doing in hair? You think, oh, do you like doing perms or a cut? Like, oh, well, <laughs> I like doing... The other day, it was a great honour for me, um, my agent... Um, uh, she's this was incredible woman that she had breast cancer and she lost all her hair. Now, I got her some shampoo called Waterman's, which is this incredible shampoo, and it started to grow back. In two years, uh, she would turn up with her hair clipped up. And I said, please let me do your hair. I'm not going to charge you anything. No, oh, yes, yes, she, anything to get out of it. She did. Eventually, I tied her down last week. <laughs> You tied and it up. Said, I sat down the chair and I highlighted it and she I finished it and she cried. And I went, oh, she said, I feel as though I've got me back. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, and, 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 for, the, and the reason I wasn't going to let you do it, I was just terrified that, I took, uh, uh, that it would drop out again. Because having no hair 
And for me, there's nothing a better job than that that I could have imagined doing. Because A, I made someone feel incredible. And she kept still ringing me up going, thank you. It's okay, I'm really happy. But it really made a lot for me to see somebody that has, for, for a woman, so crown and glory. Uh, and uh, to come back and see someone feel that way, that's why I like doing it hairdressing. Wow. So are there, are there ever, ever any times when a woman um, hates what you've done? <laughs> yes, do you know what? There's a lot of psychology to hair. You know, you can definitely, the worst is getting the braid, right? You've done the 10 trials on her uh, <laughs> and, and you've got the right hairdo for it and you've come in and she, you know, you've had a couple of glasses of champagne with her to get in a good mood. You've put her up and she bursts into tears. <laughs> it's the exact same hairdo you've done the last 10 times. <laughs> and, and I remember the first time it happened to me, I was like, oh my God. You know, I felt like. <laughs> and off she uh, two weeks later, after the honeymoon, comes in to see me with a present. She goes, I'm so sorry. I just didn't know if I wanted to get married. It was nothing to do with your hair. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so, so there are That's times like that. And then there's people that just don't know what they want or it's about the psychology. I mean, there's people I call them that go to so many different hairdressers. They go and pay £700 to one hairdresser thinking something different is going to happen. And they're just not in, they're not in the right place themselves. So there's nothing you can really do. Uh, and and you know, hairdresser. Stephen, I'm very faithful to my hairdresser and I've had more husbands than hairdressers. <laughs> Well, that's a it's good sign to me because, you know, if you, if you go to a different place, I mean, there's, there's hairdressers that are dreadful. The hairdresser that says to you, oh, where did you get your hair cut last time? Well, get out of that chair and move because there should be no interest in that. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, and I've had clients uh, from, oh, God, but well, some of them have been doing almost 30 years uh, and, uh, and they're loyal and they don't go anywhere else because... They don't, want, I mean, you know, they always get that one that thinks the grass is greener over the septic tank, as I always call it. And, <laughs> and they come back to you and they go, oh, my um, my my friend bought me a bit of gift voucher for Nicky Cart. <laughs> and I went, oh, really? I went, yeah, yeah. And they go, uh, yeah, and um, uh, if you could just correct it for me. <laughs> or my favourite one, was, my favourite one was... So, one of my clients comes in uh, and she's sitting on her hair was a bit odd and I went where did you go and she went she told me I went well he flirted with me and I went oh I'm sorry I didn't realize I had to flirt with you he's made you look like a Cornish pasty but he flirted with you <laughs> what do you prefer doing hair or writing or I, you know I, I, I love I've got to be honest with you, I really, I really loved hairdressing and then I got to the stage where uh, I, I thought, I can't do this, stand on my feet all day, and I like doing the session styling. So I started writing, I wrote a column for the Sun newspaper and uh, then they said to me, well, actually, you're better interviewing the celebrities than some of our journalists because uh, you get more out of them. So it's, it's Jane Moore expanded uh, the column to be interviewing celebrities about beauty. And then I retrained uh, with Helen Galley at the London College. Uh, so I was able to do journalism and started doing nice journalism uh, for the tabloids, like my 10 things in my fridge and, and beauty and expanded from there. And then started writing books and kept doing hair because I wanted to do something a little bit different and I really enjoyed doing it. Uh, and it's great. The downside of it is because of the tabloids, people think, you know, if you lie down with dogs, you're going to pick up a few fleas, as Michelle Cole's mother told me. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I really wasn't involved in that side of it. I was like, right, for the, the magazine sections of it and enjoyed doing it. So I've expanded for So I like doing a little bit of everything. I love writing. Uh, it was something that's What's told your me new it. book, Stephen? Well, the new book's called The Hacking. Yeah. And, uh, Unfortunately, myself and a few others got hacked. Uh, and, I did. Uh, I did and it was well. quite, quite distressing. <laughs> so it did actually affect our group because no one could actually work out where things were coming from. And mm -hmm. you know, people see. I mean, as an actor, you see ghosts sometimes. So you've got. I mean, with yourself, when you get famous, some friends uh, aren't quite as nice as they should be, or they get a bit jealous. So people started thinking, "Where's this coming from?" So it did affect our group altogether. Nobody knew about hacking at that time. It was just like, "How did that?" We find out about that. So the book is about a group of friends. Uh, all meeting up to begin with, uh, uh, who are living glamorous lifestyles, 
and things are starting to get leaked. And uh, it's the story of how what actually happened. And also from the angle of the paper itself, uh, what it's like for a journalist who has to goes into it. Because some of the people, some of the journalists you speak to, uh, who start off wanting to be great female writers, right, suddenly find themselves in a bar trying to get someone to talk that you know, they're talking to a journalist. Uh, and a lot of them didn't want to start off that way, I don't think. Because nobody goes on a course to learn how to entrap people, do they? So, so is oh. it a novel? Is this a novel? It's a novel. It's a novel, yeah. Oh, that's wow. Cool. I think you shouldn't give up the hairdressing because I, I do my own hair and I have done for years because yeah. I have so many aggressive hairdressers who come <laughs> for you. <laughs> and so I thought, forget this. I do my own hair with a mirror behind me and a mirror in front and I'm happy. But you know you're the kind of. It's so true. To, 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 uh, Gabby, it's so true. It's so true. You know uh, uh, what, how on earth they got the nerve to be aggressive. I'm all. I'm always full of self doubt. You know, I, I, I'm a really good hairdresser, but I always presume I can do better. I've never been aggressive to a client, but I've seen them think they know better than anybody else, particularly ones that come from a certain institute uh, uh, who think they, they they can barely blow dry uh, and they do a haircut. And they think they're God's gift. Uh, uh, and, and I, myself look they're paying the money to you <laughs> yeah well I, I think i think caddy would come to you because she's it, it looks like she's found her man don't you? Completely. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> the least thing you expect is someone to come up with an attitude that they're yeah. better than you and when you arrive at the arrive at the shop uh, a bit like uh, a lot of theatrical agents uh, yes, that's, a, well, that's another the story. Think, you know, uh, uh, there's the agents, with the, you know, there's a lot of people in this day and age that aren't really agents or PRs, are they? They, they, no. they, know, they know enough to be dangerous and they actually want to be the person they're representing. So now we've got this field of people that go mm. from, you know, oh, I really want to be on a reality show by representing two at the moment. Uh, but they really wouldn't know uh, how to deal with a phone call on a Friday night from one of the newspapers that's going to do a, a story on their client, how to deal with them, mm. unlike a very professional agent. Uh, yes. There's just too many floating around now. <laughs> I think so. Stephen, we have literally, we, we've got to go because we, we've oh. just talked and talked. Is there anything you oh. want to say to us? I was loving, I was really enjoyable to be on the show. Thank you to D, Debbie, Gabby, Natalie. Thank I you so much. I think we're going to make Thank you, you. Our, our, official, our official bloke if you'd like to come back and talk about anything because oh, you've been fantastic. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Time. Oh, look, look at that. Look at that, that face. That is amazing. You're so right, Stephen. You're so it's, right. Uh, oh, God. my God. She's going to be going down the street today going, <laughs> look at me. <laughs> no, it just looks amazing. Yeah. I love your hat, by the way. It looks so good on you. You're so stylish. Yeah. Anyway, thanks. I won't keep having any longer. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, see you soon, Steve. Love to see you. See you soon. I was completely charmed from beginning oh. to end. That was it for me. Oh, oh my God. God. Yes, me too. I love him, don't you? He's I just love him, adorable. But have... Back to our children and grandchildren. Uh, yes. Oh. Bloody hell. No, thank you. I'm going to go back to the... I think a bo I need a bottle of whiskey after what I went through yesterday. <laughs> I, I know. Think the thing is, when you, when, you, when you do do all this, you know, looking after the grandchildren, I think what our kids forget is that we've already done this before. When we were a lot younger. When we were a lot younger and it was a lot easier. And then they go, yeah. oh, yes, you, you know, running around after a 14-month-old who can do everything and can run anywhere. <laughs> um, oh. you know, and, you know, you've got the Christmas tree and then you've got, I tripped over one of the dogs and then you've got Archie and Albie going, yeah, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. You know, <laughs> it was just, and then Kira going, oh, I'm done. you think, oh, God. <laughs> Anyway. I'm glad to hear go. she's better today. Yes, let's go. Lovely to see you guys. See you and soon. You. Lots see of you love. Soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.